Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. It's a cloudy day around here because we're probably going to get some snow tonight because, you know, guess what? It's December. We're coming into these days, which are very, very close to the solstice. So the days are short and I love it. It's very exciting for this Christmassy season. Christmas is only a week away. So what's going to happen with coffee in these days? Well, I think we're going to stick to the normal schedule. I mean, if someone shows up, I mean, I'm going to be here on Christmas Day. It's kind of a work day for me. So <clears throat> if uh, if anyone comes on Christmas Day, I'll be here. I don't know if anyone else will be here. I don't know if like Anthony or Rachel will be here to run the show, but you know, it's blocked off in my calendar. But yeah, so really, honestly, I think the answer is, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll be here. And then usually what we do is like after Christmas, we definitely go dark with... Um, coffee with father gray but not until the week after so the like the octave of christmas we do but then the week after that which is not as interesting liturgically we chill out eh, something like that i haven't decided yet we'll see we'll just play it by ear this is a complicated time of year and we shouldn't necessarily go out of our way to do crazy things all right as we always do let us begin with our prayer the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, I do want to talk a little bit about the very interesting new declaration that came from the Dicastery of the Doctrine of the Faith this morning about blessing of people in irregular marriage situations and same-sex couples. So at some point today, you're probably going to read on the news that the Holy Father has done this. And certainly like right before mass this morning, my phone was blowing up with text messages. So I have very quickly read the document and skimmed it. And like usual, like immediately you say this thing, like the title of it, on the pastoral meaning of blessings. And you realize, oh, it's actually not exactly what you think it is. It's something a little bit different, but just a good reminder of what is actually up. So <clears throat> I am, uh, while we go through the readings, I'm going to pull up the pertinent passages that I saw on my phone, but I haven't seen on my computer yet. And I'm going to read them to you and explain what is being said. But as always, don't freak out. It's all okay. Nothing is bad. Everything is fine. But it is something that is worth mentioning. But let me give you this. The takeaway, the important one is, please always be kind to each other. Do not hate people because of whatever is going on in their lives or who they are or all the other things. Do not hate people, but be kind to them and be loving, which is like, yeah, that's like the, you know, the Christian message in, in kind of a big way, because so often people get very confused about these things and they think that righteousness is actually telling people to get lost in their lives or something. And that's so far from the truth, obviously. Anyway, more on that in a minute. Honestly, this morning at Mass, I wanted to preach about it, but I only preached the first thing, which I will tell you on coffee too, but also there's a the second thing. Because I think today's readings and the prayers are remarkably well positioned for this particular discussion. So... Let us dig in and listen closely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north, and from all the lands to which I banish them, they shall again live on their own land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Alleluia, alleluia. O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses on Sinai, Come to rescue us with your mighty power. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The nature of the kind of prophecy that we have been talking about with regard to our Lord Jesus has been 
pretty easy to go through. In the last couple of weeks, I've promoted this idea of like, hey, you know, Advent, we only have three weeks. Let's look at things through a certain lens and let's go through the theme of the theological virtues. The first week we did faith, and the second week we did hope, and this week there's love. So <clears throat> we get this very interesting image through a lot of these prophecies about Christ, which does not necessarily square up with love. So for example, he will be the king who will establish law in Israel. See, that's a love thing. Doesn't it, it doesn't come first to our mind, nor does it come first in the mind that you must name him Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. You see, that's love. It's a hard connection to make, and we can make it, of course. We can always like understand what is really, really going on, that God sent his only begotten for the sake of the love of the world. I mean, like in a John 3.16 kind of way. But <clears throat> when it comes down to it in like the nuts and bolts of it, it's not because it's like, this is the shoot from Jesse, the key of David, the day spring of on high and all the rest of it. It doesn't seem like these are actually loving per se, things. Of course, we're very much in the sense of what love is in this time of year, because yeah, it's Christmas, and he is love. God is love. I mean, obviously so, but we're also talking about like the establishing of law and the saving of sins, the, the saving of people from their sins, of slavery to sin, the exodus, the reason why this <clears throat> will save the people from their sins kind of thing. You will name him Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. It's a reference to Joshua in the Old Testament. It's a reference to the Exodus. It's a reference to Moses. It's a reference to this process of being defended by God. And you will name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And, and that's where this all, all kind of like very interestingly flows together. The image that we have of Jesus is one that is certainly given to us in prophecy, especially in these Advent days, but we can very easily kind of forget that really like the reason behind it, the reason why we should have this very impressive moment that is so very foretold and all the prophecy that goes along with it is because God loves you. And it really is just that direct. All the rest of it is, yes, the manner by which it happens. And yes, the king has to establish law. But you see, that's the point. The king has to establish law. And then the sinners must come to this law. And in order to be freed from sin, there has to be some kind of change there. And it has to happen not just because like the law is it, and that's what a law is, but there has to be a conversion. And so all of these things about the establishment of the law and the kingdom is something which also is understood in a somewhat gradual way as people, us, come in conversion, which is also what we really, really believe in. We believe these things of Christ. He is the king. He is justice. He is the son of God. We believe these things of us, that though we are formed in the image and likeness of God, we sin. And so we must be converted. That doesn't happen all at once. It's not simply a magical thing. Instead, it happens very gradually. And it's <clears throat> kind of in this light, then, that we talk about today's declaration, which is very, very interesting. And I didn't find the very useful thing that I read earlier. I need to find it differently. It's called Fiducia Supplicans, is the name of the declaration. Like, like... The the, the 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 faith that asks and the faith that supplies. It's, it's a very interesting idea, and I think it's a really beautiful one. Let me pull up. up. I already scrolled past it, and there. Oh, darn it. Okay, it's around here somewhere. But really what the gist of it is this. It's about the nature of blessings. Let me sum it up for you. Blessings are good. We should be generous with blessings. We should not be parsimonious with blessings that people should be blessed, especially the people who want to be blessed, who are living in life in a kind of obviously acknowledging that they are not righteous, which frankly should be the attitude of everyone. 
and you know desire to live a life that is you know more blessed that is say that more holy that they desire to be on a path toward holiness and yes it comes from necessarily in this world of ours a variety of different directions but don't all look the same in terms of their path go figure <clears throat> If anything, I know that this gospel about the um, divorce of Mary from Joseph, because that's what the gospel says, is always been a complicated one and used to kind of say a number of things which are not necessarily always justified about the, the family situation of Mary and Joseph. But the truth of the matter is, if we look at it from just a little bit of a higher elevation, we can see that, yes, this is rather common people very seldom have lives which are exactly like checkbox all of the perfect things and so much so that even with the holy family there is some question about things and some confusion so we shouldn't be entirely surprised that in fact oh yeah nobody has exactly the most perfect of lives that is without any kind of thing going on that is somehow not exactly perfect or the same or yeah there are a lot of things which are different so <clears throat> in this document released today which talks about the nature of blessings there is a section which is kind of the conclusion and what the document leads up to aside from a nice catechesis on what a blessing is and a blessing is a good thing again we are in favor of them the document also goes out of its way to say we're not talking about getting people married who can't be it's not what it says very clearly so i'm going to read now from the document just so we can all be kind of like updated real fast within the horizon outlined here appears the possibility of blessings for couples in irregular situations and for couples of the same sex the form of which should not be fixed ritually by ecclesial authorities to avoid reducing confusion with the blessing proper to the sacrament of marriage. In such cases, a blessing may be imparted that not only has an ascending value, but also involves the invocation of a blessing that descends from God upon those who, recognizing themselves to be destitute and in need of his help, do not claim a legitimation of their own status, but who beg that all that is true, good, and humanly valid in their lives and their relationships be enriched healed and elevated by the presence of the Holy Spirit. These forms of blessing express the supplication that God may grant those aids that come from the impulses of his spirit, what classical theology calls actual grace, so that human relationships may mature and grow in fidelity to the gospel, that they may be freed from their imperfections and frailties, and that they may express themselves in the ever-increasing dimension of the divine love. And it goes on to say a number of other things. <clears throat> Um, and like, over and over again says, this is a blessing that, although not included in any liturgical rite, unless intercessory prayer with the invocation of God's help by those who humbly turn to him, God never turns away anyone who approaches him. Ultimately, a blessing offers people a means to increase their trust in God. The request for a blessing thus expresses and nurtures openness to the transcendence of mercy and closeness to God, in a thousand concrete circumstances of life, which is no small thing in the world in which we live. It is seed of the Holy Spirit that must be nurtured, not hindered. And so it goes on. Therefore, pastoral sensibility of ordained ministers should also be formed to perform blessings spontaneously that are not found in the book of blessings. And now we get, again, a, a note about what this document is about. It's not just like, don't go to the cookbook necessarily to find things that you need because some of them are beyond that go figure for the for the consequences in certain uh, situations of life <clears throat> going on one should neither provide for nor promote a ritual for the blessings of couples in an irregular situation at the same time one should not prevent or prohibit the church's closeness to people in every situation in which they might seek God's help through a simple blessing. In a brief prayer preceding this spontaneous blessing, the ordained minister could ask that the individuals have peace, health, a spirit of patience, dialogue, and mutual assistance, but also God's light and strength to be able to fulfill his will completely. And so we, we can see that like very much that we are 
frankly, already doing that with our lives. One of the reasons why like coffee is here so we can like pray for each other, be spontaneous, pray actually, and ask for God's blessings upon us. And we have like this, <laughs> did you notice that list that was just, I just read? Having of peace, health, a spirit of patience, dialogue, and mutual assistance. Those are things that we should always ask for for everyone. <laughs> but also God's light and strength to be able to fulfill his will completely. You know, and, and that's like, that's actually the structure of a collect. That prayer that we say at the beginning of things has exactly the structure. O oh Lord, our God, in your greatness, grant us peace, health, a spirit of patience, dialogue, and mutual assistance, so that by your grace, we may be able to do your will completely. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I mean, like, that's exactly how a prayer sounds. All right, Sandy asks for this to be in the chat. I'm putting it in the chat. It's just from the press office of the Vatican City State. There you go. The <clears throat> idea here is, hey, look, this is a beautiful document. I am really grooving to this, honestly, because it says a lot of things, which I think to be very, very true. And I am kind of like obviously in favor of having situations and platform and like the paradigm shifted a little bit, like for example, here to do the things, not because we don't do the other things, obviously, no, we want to do like liturgical things really, really, really well. But there's also a place in the life of the church to be more human. And I think that this has been like the overarching message of the pontificate of Pope Francis. And I think that's incredibly important. Let us be actually natural and human with each other. Now, there's also a lot of pent up demand, especially from certain people who feel really bad about the way they live because they want you know, to be acknowledged as being okay. Well, here's the funny thing about sin that we kind of forget in general. Everyone is a sinner. Only Jesus saves from sin. Everyone is loved by Jesus. The whole reason why we celebrate this Christmas a week away is precisely what it says in the gospel today. Jesus, who saves the people from their sins. It's an act of love from God but it doesn't necessarily feel like it. It doesn't necessarily seem like it because this is also the king establishing the law of love, which not everyone is entirely ready for. And so, yeah, it takes a while to actually be converted even though this kingdom is also here and also not yet. For all of us who are on this path, we're very much together on it, first of all, obviously, but it's also a path toward actually being with God toward holiness, which does not happen like all at once. It takes a while. And we have to be indulgent of each other. And this is something that I firmly believe, and we all should be. I mean, again, come to the idea in Christ's own gospel that the person who is without sin cast the first stone. Who is that? Indeed, we have to be very, very indulgent of each other. After all, we know that the Lord is indulgent with us. We should also be very indulgent. And this is what mercy is about. This is what love is about. Yes, there is a law. Yes, there is what is good and true and right. But there's also that human heart, which must be shared I know, for one, that I have lots of friends who do not conform in their lives to the morality of Christ. And they're very dear friends. That's not a bad thing. If anything, it's not even like for the sake of like trying to needle our way into a better, like, I don't know, list of, conver of conversions or converts or something. Like, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is simply being open and loving. And that's really what this is all about. And so if you hear crazy things on the news today about now we're doing gay marriages in the Catholic Church, no, not exactly. In fact, not at all, really. Um, but there is a good reminder, and I think it is very well placed here a week before Christmas, that we must be loving of each other. 
and that you know that which is of god for example a blessing is certainly of god all right well obviously there's going to be a lot more to say about that and people are going to get into twists but you know honestly it's a good document and i really do actually recommend it so in so far as what i've read so far which has been like hmm trying to read this in five minutes before coffee today all right as we always do let's bring our prayers together and offer them to the lord that he will hear and answer us for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop, Oscar, and for all bishops, that they may shepherd our world with compassion and love and never tire of proclaiming the beauty of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that as we look forward to the celebration of the nativity of our Lord, we may also remember and prepare for his return, striving always to live in his grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for our many blessings, may we continue to be inspired by the wisdom of the aged and the innocence of the young, that we may come to a deeper contemplation of God and his gifts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of discernment, that we may live our lives in accordance with God's word, becoming each day more perfect disciples of Christ in our outreach to the poor, the hungry, and the outcast. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for whom and what else shall we pray? From Ken, for Howard, who's been diagnosed with cancer, may we find comfort in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, creator and redeemer of human nature, who willed that your word should take flesh in an ever-virgin womb, look with favor on our prayers, that your only begotten Son, having taken to himself our humanity, may be pleased to grant us a share in his divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. We are over time and I got to get going. I would love to keep praying, but mm, sorry, not today. But anyway, tomorrow, though, we'll come back together again and all the other things. All right. God bless you all and see you then. Bye-bye.